What's happening, Puff? I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. <laughs> yeah. Jermaine Dupree, king of clouds, if you ask me, baby. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. TGJ, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. First of all is is there has been negative propaganda put out about me that's not true mm -hmm. and has really stained, tried to stain, stain my legacy. I've always been a person, I don't like to get in just talking people's business and things like that. That's the same nobody that shot Tupac. And if nobody shot Tupac, it's the same nobody that shot MLK. It's a lot of nobodies out there and nobody minds if nobody comes up missing, right? That don't bother nobody, does it? Certainly doesn't bother me. So, shout out to the nobodies. The police said they arrested the shooters, then said they didn't arrest the shooters, but I was there. Cat Williams is not holding back on his accusations, and Diddy is his number one target right now. Like, you won't believe some of the things he's saying about him. But Diddy has decided it's enough. He's not gonna let Cat badmouth him anymore, and what he did next was probably not the smartest choice, especially in the middle of all these allegations. It's like he wants to prove us all right. Well, he's getting attacked online left and right, and he can't do anything about it. So he decided threatening people was the next best choice. Clearly, that's not working out great for him. Cat is on a relentless quest to take Diddy down, and his latest revelations are nothing short of explosive. I'm a, I'm a, like I told Puffy, I don't let men take me out, sir. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Williams is accusing Diddy of allegedly trying to sabotage Jamie Foxx after Jamie decided to step away from Diddy's infamous escapades. Remember Jamie facing that serious medical emergency last year? Well, according to Williams, it wasn't just some random health scare. Nope, it was allegedly orchestrated by none other than Diddy himself. Cat is laying it all out, spilling the tea on how Jamie found himself on the brink of disaster due to this mysterious illness, and he's pointing fingers directly at Diddy. The burning question is, why is Cat choosing to spill the beans now, and is he part of a larger conspiracy to take Diddy down? The timing is raising eyebrows, and we can't help but wonder if there's more to this wild tale yet to unfold. At this point, it seems like some heavy hitters are gunning for Diddy's downfall. Cat claims the reason Diddy is getting exposed now is that he's fallen out of favor with the Hollywood higher-ups who've shielded him for years. Now that Diddy no longer has that protection, he's fair game. Cat Williams, never one to back down from exposing Hollywood's shady side, is taking things up a notch, unveiling some sinister sides of Diddy that go beyond the usual scandals. We've heard him being accused of essay multiple times now, and it all started when Cassie dropped some bombshells. She straight up accused him of messing with her head and heart during their more than a decade-long ride. But it didn't stop there. She came in heavy, claiming Diddy forced her into intimate scenes with male escorts at his wild parties. The lawsuit was so intense it had a trick warning right at the start. Diddy, thinking a settlement would shut the whole thing down, played his card. Post-settlement, more women stepped forward with stories of how Diddy got with most of them. One woman even claimed she was underage during one of these encounters. It got people wondering what really went down at those infamous parties, and was consent even in the room. Our gripe isn't with Diddy's bedroom choices, but the way he handled it. Cassie's lawsuit spilled the beans on how he made her do things with male escorts, watched, and enjoyed himself. Enter Gene Deal, Diddy's former bodyguard, adding his two cents. You being around Diddy, right? You know, you was working for Diddy for a long time. You seen a lot. You know, you told me that he was a swinger, you know, him being a part of orgies. And out of curiosity, right? You know, you being around Diddy so long, I'm sure at some point he offered you something. Have he ever offered a female to you or offered you to join an orgy or anything? Bro, we was on a tour bus one time. He had two snow bunnies. They, we picked them up in Dallas. One of the NBA basketball players introduced them to him. He asked me to go get something. I went and got it. He said, yo, Gene, they want to F you while he was laying in the bed with both of them. And I said, nah, I'm good, bro. I'm all right. And walked out. 
Jean's take, Diddy was reaping all sorts of pleasures from those freaky parties. Cassie's lawsuit hinted at Diddy having specific requests for male escorts. She mentioned he enjoyed watching her with other men and now Jean's throwing shade, suggesting Diddy might have had other ladies in similar situations. Diddy, he enjoyed watching her get smashed by BBCs. So, you know, what you think about that? Do you think she was the only one getting banged by him? <laughs> Do you think this man had this woman search for the toots online just for them to have sex with her? It's something fishy about that, bro. Seems like Gene ain't exactly Diddy's number one fan, but can you blame him? Working for Diddy sounds like a front row seat to a not so glamorous show. No wonder Gene's spilling all the tea every chance he gets. So you feel like Diddy was having to mail They had to be for both of them, they was in the room. Right? You're right. It's a freak off session. Right? She said it's a freak off session. If she says a freak off session, brother, she ain't the only one freaking off. The prostitute ain't the only one freaking off. Old boy is freaking off also. In her lawsuit, Cassie spilled the tea on Diddy's alleged attempts to take out his rivals permanently. Picture this, Diddy and Miss Ventura chilling, doing their thing with a side of substances in his crib. Suddenly, a security staff member busts in, shouting that Suge Knight, Mr. Combs' long-standing foe, was spotted at Mel's Drive Diner in LA. Cue Mr. Combs going full action hero mode, getting dressed, grabbing multiple guns from a safe, and sprinting out, convinced he's on a mission to fame Knight. But the drama doesn't end there. Cassie claims Diddy allegedly plotted to teach a lesson to Kid Cudi because post-breakup, she started dating him. During Paris Fashion Week in 2012, she says Mr. Combs informed her about plans to blow up Kid Cudi's car, orchestrating it to happen while he was home with friends. Lo and behold, shortly after, Kid Cudi's car mysteriously exploded in his driveway. Now let's rewind to April last year when Jamie Foxx had us all concerned with his hospitalization. Back then, the family kept things hush-hush, and you know what they say, where there's secrecy, something's cooking. Turns out that something might just have did Diddy's name all over it if Cat Williams is to be believed. Jamie, a longtime attendee of Diddy's infamous parties, spilled the beans to Cat about the wild happenings behind those closed VIP doors. Cat Williams didn't hold back, revealing tales of wild pool parties, extravagant spending, drugs, and some eyebrow raising activities that left fans in utter shock. Now, if you've been keeping your ears to the streets, you'd know that Diddy's parties are legendary, and not just for popping bottles and tearing up the dance floor. According to the grapevine, there's a whole other level of shenanigans happening behind those VIP doors. We're talking about stories involving male rappers, and shockingly, some even claim that underage boys are involved. It's a bit mind-boggling, but hey, it's Diddy we're talking about, and whispers about his alleged involvement in such activities have been circulating for decades. Allegedly, of course. Turns out Diddy's parties aren't just wild, they're a whole different breed of crazy. I would actually follow him with a, with a, with a camera, because at that, that time, at that time, Puff was the biggest guy in the world. You know, you couldn't even get in his party, so the way I would get in his parties, I show up with a camera. Like, your Puff, you need document, document. <laughs> and he turned around, what's up, Playboy? I said, yeah, let me get there, man. Ain't nobody getting this. And I Diddy had a penchant for male escorts, and Cassie detailed some seriously wild escapades she found herself tangled up in. The things she revealed in that lawsuit read like something out of a horror movie. According to Cassie, it wasn't just about watching Diddy play the director during these so-called freak-offs. No, it went further. Jamie Foxx, a regular at these parties, mysteriously fell ill and almost died. Jamie, in his own way, had hinted at the wild happenings at Diddy's parties, even claiming that Diddy once assigned him the task of recording the questionable activities that unfolded there. People claim he allegedly tried to coerce them into some unconventional gatherings. And word on the street is, Diddy doesn't take rejection lightly. In 2013, federal agencies decided to play detective, launching an investigation into the nature of Diddy's activities with young boys. When the feds step in, you know they mean business. They probe deep into Diddy's world before abruptly dropping the investigation. According to Cat Williams, Diddy was still under the protection of some seriously powerful people at the time, and they allegedly pulled some strings to get the feds off his back. Now, Diddy's former artist, Maze, also dropped hints that Diddy tried to push him into some unconventional situations when he was under Bad Boy Records. Allegedly, this ordeal was the real reason behind Mace's beef with Diddy, eventually prompting him to ditch the label. And Mace is not holding back in his mission to expose Diddy. Recently, he brought out the big guns, receipts. We won't get to it. 
What did Puff do to piss you off? How did he do you dirty if he did you dirty? And what is and what is doing dirty if a motherfucker put you on? Mm. That's really good. Let me take my shit off. Um. Now I could say this because it's not something I didn't say to him. Puff. How how do I want to say this? Me and Puff was like. I felt like I did more than I got credit for, more than I got paid for. You felt or did you do that? Because um, you said felt. Like okay, feeling. let's clear that up then. You're saying you feeling that. No, we're going to keep it with, because I'm, I'm trying to be nice. I never got paid what I was worth, and I never got the respect I was worth. So the disdain that I got for Puff is more like trying to keep me here. Mace is spilling some wild tea about Diddy, claiming he had this messed up habit of pressuring his artists into some seriously intimate situations. And get this, if they dared to say no, it wasn't just career damage, it was like label expulsion and he slapped them with these hardcore NDAs to keep them quiet. Like, seriously, Diddy allegedly had these ironclad contracts to shut down anyone trying to expose him. This is like a whole new level to the drama at Bad Boy Entertainment. Mace and Diddy are going at it, and Mace is dropping bomb accusations left and right. Is Diddy really pulling these manipulative moves within his own record label? The gossip mill is buzzing with theories of about what went down between Diddy and Mace. Some people think Diddy might have pushed Mace into some shady situations, kind of like what Cassie claimed in her lawsuit. I, I can't blame Puff for this because I can't say he's doing it, but I can't say he's not. So if you look at the people who hate on me, right? They're from revolt shows. Who am I revolt? The people that had the biggest problems with Mace and write the craziest stuff about Mace, come from revolt. Or revolt. After ditching Bad Boy Records, Mace ditched the rap game for a higher calling. He went pastor mode. Word on the street is that Mace's switch to Christianity might have something to do with witnessing some wild stuff at Diddy's parties that didn't vibe with his spirit. When the music scene gets too much, it seems like artists these days are finding solace in higher places. Mace probably peeped some things that didn't align with his soul, pushing him towards a more spiritual path. But before the pastor gig, things between Mace and Diddy were anything but friendly. Rumor has it Mace didn't see a dime from Diddy post bad boy. No cash, no checks, just crickets on the payment front. And if that wasn't enough drama, Diddy supposedly did a number on Mace's rep, putting him on an industry blacklist. Diddy went full gossip mode, making it nearly impossible for Mace to score a deal with another label. Shady business, right? Now, Mace is back to spill the tea on the secrets he once peeped. In an interview, he threw some serious shade at those working behind the scenes to trash his name, spilling that there's more to Diddy and his parties than what the public knows. Mace dropped a bomb, saying it's worse than anyone thought. Rumors about Diddy's sexuality have been making the rounds for ages, and back in the 90s, Suge Knight and Tupac Shakur were some of the first to toss those questions into the mix. Suge Knight, always up for stirring the pot, was dropping some bold hints back in the 90s about Diddy's preferences. You know Suge never one to be shy, especially when it came to his feelings about Diddy. The two weren't exactly best buds at the time, so Suge's statements had people buzzing. And then there's Tupac Shakur, known for keeping it real. Even Tupac had suspicions about Diddy's sexuality, and he didn't hold back from airing his thoughts, openly talking about the possibility of Diddy being on the down low. The industry was buzzing with whispers, and Tupac, true to his nature, addressed them head on. 50 Cent, no stranger to controversy, has been on a mission to explain exposed Diddy for quite some time. Their beef goes back to the 90s when 50, hustling to secure a deal with Bad Boy Records, faced rejection from Diddy. However, this wasn't a personal disdain for 50, it was rooted in Diddy's reservations about signing an artist with a gangster image, especially after the tragic death of Biggie Smalls. 50, known for his gangster vibe, desperately sought that bad boy deal, even scoring a meeting with Diddy. But Diddy, with deals on the table, wasn't keen on dealing with the drama associated with 50's image. Despite 50 Cent being the hottest thing in the game, Diddy wasn't willing to take the risk. This rejection fueled a personal beef between them, and 50 Cent, known for his unfiltered nature, has been vocal about his grievances with Diddy ever since. Fast forward to the present, 50 Cent continues to drop hints and make bold claims about Diddy engaging in questionable activities at his parties. The n was like, yeah, like first he was hamping him to, to right. get 
stop. Then he was like, yo, he's like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we could just hang out, nigga. We gotta, we gotta Ooh, kick that, it. This is pause. Okay. He telling me we gotta kick it and shit. And he was like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping or something? I mean, like I pay for it. And I was like, what the fuck this kid just say. <laughs> <laughs> I got the fuck away from him because I was like, this is. <laughs> While most people initially brushed off 50's allegations, what he's been saying this whole time raises questions about whether there might be more to the story than meets the eye. In the past couple of weeks, Diddy has faced a bunch of accusations from several young men who once looked up to him for mentorship and a shot at success in the entertainment industry. These allegations are hitting Diddy hard. Notable accusers include rapper YK Osiris, actor Orlando Brown, and Empire star Bryshire Gray. These guys, at some point, considered Diddy a mentor, thinking he would pave the way for their success. Little did they know, Diddy wasn't handing out freebies. Brisher Gray's introduction to Diddy happened through his manager Charlie Mack, who helped him land his role in Empire. Brisher had dreams of becoming a rapper, so Charlie Mack connected him with Will Smith, who then linked him up with Diddy. Now, considering the rumors about Will being a frequent participant in Diddy's wild escapades, you can connect the dots. The streets are buzzing with claims that Diddy allegedly blackballed Brisher when he grew tired of the wild activities, which might explain why Brysher faded from the scene after Empire. Even Usher, Diddy's protege, finds himself entangled in the whispers surrounding Diddy's peculiar fantasies. Usher spilled the tea during a revealing interview with Howard Stern. He recounted a chapter from his life when, at the tender age of 14, he was sent off to live with Diddy. This move, orchestrated by L.A. Reid, gave Usher a first-hand look at the music industry while rubbing shoulders with big names. Usher, in his candid revelation, shared insights into his time living with Diddy. And it was more than he had bargained for. I moved to New York City and I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yes. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending you over to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn Flavor some... Camp. Yeah, Flavor Camp? Yeah, that's what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's going to... In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orgy, like nonstop, right? No, not really. I Come mean, on. but there, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was... And it was <laughs> about I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was it was pretty wild. So, like, imagine Usher, right? He's cruising through the music maze and suddenly, boom. He gets invited to what Diddy calls the Diddy Flavor Camp. Now, hold up. It's not your regular boot camp. We're talking a 14-year-old Usher ripped from the comfort of home and thrown into Diddy's wild flavor world. Can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. <laughs> and, and what kind of, and do you have money? What's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? <laughs> Hell no. It's like, what kind of flavors are we talking about here? Usher's spilling the tea, but not giving the full deets in his interview. He's dropping hints about witnessing some seriously wild stuff. Stuff a teen should totally be shielded from. Why would a 14-year-old Usher live with a grown man? It's worse when it's with Diddy, who had a wild reputation back then. Now you might ask yourself, what business did young 13-year-old Usher have living with grown, freaky, kinky Diddy? For an entire year, I might add. Well, that blame is to be placed on L.A. Reid. Apparently, he did an interview with Rolling Stone in 2004, where he said he sent Usher to Puffy Flavor Camp to toughen up. Now, this is what Usher had to say in the 2016 interview with Howard Stern in his own words. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending you over to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> Flavor some... Camp? Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's in the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. Come I mean, on. but there, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I saying? I went there to see... So Usher was basically the night owl at Diddy's crib, part 
partying hard with the grown-ups till the crack of dawn. And when Howard Stern threw chores into the mix, Usher just grinned and spilled the tea that his only job was to party. Imagine that. No chores, just vibes. But hold up, things take a sketchy turn. When asked if Diddy's spot was a girl haven, Usher got all awkward, shutting it down but dropping hints about seeing some interesting things. Now what's interesting things, you ask? Let's hit rewind to that cringe moment when Diddy spilled the beans in an interview about sharing a bed with Usher. Back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the frosted flakes, you know what I'm saying, the four paws was invented, you know what I'm saying, but it's my brother for real, we used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the frosted flakes because he used to always get up early, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yo, what the what did Puff just say? Nobody's gonna count just for me. Puff just said we used to wrestle over the frosted flakes and we're streaming live. That was stupid. Listen, that was Stupid. What's the deal with Diddy crashing with a 14-year-old? The guy's got a mansion with rooms for days. Fans are scratching their heads, trying to figure out what's really cooking between Diddy and Usher. Whatever it is, it feels shady as heck. But wait, Diddy dropped those details, and suddenly, it's like he realized he spilled the tea. Usher's there, looking kinda embarrassed, like Diddy just let out something that should've stayed in the vault. Now, Usher's been tight-lipped about the whole Diddy party scene, leaving us wondering, did he dive into the wild side too deep? Does Diddy have some secret sauce on him? Him? Is he low-key scared? Diddy might pull a stunt on him, just like the alleged move on Jamie Foxx? Let's spill the tea on the rumors buzzing around Diddy's alleged vibe with another young gun in the game, Justin Bieber, yes, the Biebs himself. Word on the street is that when Justin was just 15, he got caught up in a wild 48-hour saga with Diddy. Um, Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed the Usher. Who signed the Usher? I, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, and we're gonna go full, buck full crazy. crazy. Justin's been pretty real about hitting a dark patch back then, dealing with the not so bright side of the industry, and wrestling with some substance stuff. There was a time where I was sipping lean, I was popping pills, I was doing Molly, um, you know, shrooms, everything. and. It was just an escape for me. I was waking up in the morning and the first thing I was doing is popping pills and smoking a blunt and starting my day. Now, you know Diddy's got a rep for riding that substance wave too. There's been some chatter, dropping hints about Diddy's maybe not so cool moves towards Justin when he was still rocking a baby face. Picture this, after that 48 hour ride, Diddy hooks Justin up with a Ferrari for his 16th birthday. Nice gift or just a slick move to keep Justin in the loop on whatever was cooking behind the scenes, these rumors are catching fire and it's time to dig into the deets. Some whispers even say that Diddy might have had a hand in Justin's early dive into the drug scene. Fans couldn't ignore the major shift in Justin's circle after he decided to clean up his act and kick the habit. He distanced himself from Diddy and the hangouts with Usher weren't as frequent. Justin embarked on an incredible journey, waving goodbye to the party scene, achieving sobriety, and taking his career to new heights. Now circling back to the Diddy drama, Cat Williams just dropped a bombshell, claiming that Diddy Diddy allegedly tried something sinister against Jamie last year. Jamie allegedly wanted out of Diddy's infamous parties, and according to him, this decision led to a shocking incident. In case you missed the tea, Jamie faced a severe health setback last year, experiencing a medical emergency on a movie set. While the Fox family initially kept the details under wraps, Jamie's daughter Corinne stepped in with a statement. She mentioned a medical complication and assured everyone that Jamie was on the way to recovery. Here's where it gets intriguing. 
Several industry insiders hinted that Jamie might have been the victim of an attack. Steve Harvey expressed his concern, saying Jamie's fit and doesn't usually get into trouble. Things got even stranger when reports suggested that the cops visited Jamie in the hospital. Allegedly, he told them that what happened wasn't an accident, but someone intentionally tried to harm him. Someone tweeted, Jamie Foxx told the cops somebody is trying to kill him. I'm telling you, Maine, it's like they have a timer of these celebs' lives. I believe him. Soon, fingers were pointed at Diddy, accusing him of allegedly orchestrating Jamie's medical emergency. People speculate that Diddy might be targeted targeting Jamie because he recently confirmed that Diddy used to attend and host wild parties with shady stuff going down, and he used to record them. <laughs> I'm like, damn, this shit's crazy, man. So what I did was, I would show up to the party in my little, uh, in a little town car, this town, you know, I grabbed a town car so I could skirt, puff the SUVs and the road, and the Bentleys, the whole night, he get out. I get out too, with a camera. The big cannon, like, yo, pup, I should document this, right? But hold on, there's more. Cat Williams insists that Jamie Foxx, the party whistleblower, allegedly wanted out of these wild gatherings, tired of the freaky scenes. And guess what? Rejecting Diddy is not on Diddy's menu. He allegedly decided to teach Jamie a lesson. Now, Cat Williams spills that Diddy decided to teach Jamie a lesson for meddling in his affairs. But we know Diddy isn't going to stop at that. Cat claims there's a reason Jamie's family kept his medical situation hush-hush. They might have suspected something was amiss. Remember when Kat said Diddy offered him $50 million for a one-night stand? In a jaw-dropping interview, Kat spilled the tea that Diddy has been trying to seduce him for years. And here's the kicker. Diddy allegedly offered Kat a jaw-dropping $50 million for a one-night stand. I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting the body. And you gotta tell him no. Oh. You got to tell him no. I, oh. I did. I did. Oh. See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can say them so freely. Diddy, not being a fan of his secrets being spilled, allegedly took things to a dangerous level. Word on the streets is that Diddy supposedly orchestrated a hit on Cat, resulting in him getting kidnapped. The streets are buzzing with this news, and it seems like Diddy is on a mission to handle his ops. But, oh boy, Cat Williams isn't one to be silenced. He's back, and he's spilling even more jaw-dropping tea about Diddy. Brace yourself for this one. Cat is claiming there were alleged freak-offs involving Jay-Z and Beyonce. Did Diddy really help Jay-Z? Z drug queen Bay. Cat has the receipts and he's not holding back. Now, the big question is, is Diddy so drunk in love with Cat or is he just down bad and desperate to get Cat into his bed? The internet is shook by these revelations and we can't help but wonder what other wild stories Cat has up his sleeve. Welcome to 2024, where Cat Williams and Shannon Sharp just put the entire internet in a literal chokehold. So, when Cat Williams turned down Diddy's jaw-dropping offer of $50 million for a one-night stand, everything changed. Allegedly, Diddy took it to another level and, brace yourself, reportedly threatened to end Kat's story. The streets have been buzzing for a while about Diddy's flirty ways, not just with the ladies, but allegedly with the gentlemen, too. This isn't breaking news. There have been talks for years about Diddy's rumored interest in men. Back in the 90s, Wendy Williams, the queen of spilling the tea, was one of the voices trying to expose Diddy's alleged secret activities. In fact, things got so intense that Diddy allegedly tried to get his girl group total to handle Wendy. Imagine going from thinking you're about to sign a record deal and become a superstar to being asked to jump someone on behalf of your boss. But Diddy's calculation didn't quite land when he allegedly tried to get Wendy Williams jumped to keep her from spilling the tea. Even the prospect of someone getting jumped wasn't enough to silence Wendy, who continued dropping hints about Diddy's alleged activities. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams, and uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. And now it's all come full circle. There were many situations, none of which to talk about, but there were many situations um, back in the day in, in my career and um, it's all coming full circle now. In a move that escalated the drama, Diddy reportedly got so furious that he got Wendy fired from her job, attempting to put a serious dent in her life. Wendy Williams's ex-husband, Kevin Hunter, added more fuel to the fire in an interview, shedding light on just how close Diddy allegedly came to wreaking havoc on Wendy's life and career. Is it true that Diddy got her fired? 
from the radio station? Did he have anything to do with that? I think that he had, yes, I think he had, well, let's be clear, nobody got fired. Okay. He got suspended. Okay. Yeah. Did, did he use his influence and power with Steve Smith and him at the time? And, and, and God knows whatever his relationship was with the overall station, because Bad Boy was a powerhouse. We all know how Bad Boy dominated a large part of the 90s. And as far as New York, you know, they, they was a powerhouse. So could he, was he, you know, King Joffy Joe? Yeah. Did he go in there and shake him up and say, yo, you know, I want this chick off. She's dissing my group and all kinds of shit. Yeah. Everybody's feeling the void now because you know she'd have spilled some mad tea about Diddy's drama, especially when that Cassie lawsuit hit. So let's circle back to Kat's interview on Club Shay Shay. Kat's basically the watchdog of the industry's shady corners, always exposing the stuff that fans are blissfully unaware of. Whether it's shady business or some Illuminati-level monkey business, Kat spills the tea without hesitation. You can't put a price on his silence. Now let's talk about Kat's not-so-friendly history with Diddy. This goes way beyond the Cassie drama. Back in 2000, 2011, Kat was already exposing Diddy, dragging Jermaine Dupri along for the ride. What would Diddy and Jermaine Dupri have in common? Kat Williams alleges that Jermaine Dupri and Diddy were grooming underage youths. Now, up until this point, I've never heard anything about Jermaine Dupri. Allegedly, one of those youths was Chris Cross. So Chris Kelly and Chris Smith, the Chris Cross boys, caught Jermaine Dupri's eye back in elementary school. By their early teens, they were making waves in the industry, but behind the scenes, Jermaine allegedly engaged in disturbing activities with them, even passing them around to industry buddies like Diddy. Despite having suspicions, the promise of fame led them to endure the abuse. This dark story took a toll on Chris Kelly, leading him to drug problems. Both boys had gut feelings about Jermaine, yet the allure of fame made them turn a blind eye. In an interview, Chris Kelly openly called Jermaine a potential child molester, exposing power dynamics and the exploitation faced by young talents. According to Gene Deal, Diddy was also planning to exploit members of his girl band, Danity Kane. I heard him, and I'm giving you this, Aubrey. He stood up there and he said, in front of a lot of people, we were in the studio, and I said something to him and walked out the studio. He said, yo, I'ma drug their ass off and pick them out and, and, and pip them out to my <laughs> pip them out to my nick. He said, I'ma drug them out. I'ma get them all on drugs. And I'ma pimp their ass out to my nick. And I was like, them somebody kids and walked out. Even though Kat had made his feelings about Diddy Crystal clear, Diddy apparently made persistent attempts to proposition him. Like, seriously, what's the logic there? Now, you might think that after getting threatened by Diddy, Kat would keep his lips sealed, right? Wrong. Kat Williams is basically immune to fear. The Illuminati has supposedly been after him for years, and he still spills the beans. He even brought up Jaguar Wright's claims about Diddy and Jay-Z being more than friends, hinting at a more intimate connection. Building a working, you know, camaraderie with honeycombs and um aka diddler i mean diddy and um why do you give him the honeycombs why, why do you give him honeycombs because he smacks so sweet But Kat didn't stop there. He delved into some serious accusations, claiming that Diddy and Jay-Z were involved in shady business together, including alleged grooming of younger women. According to Kat, Jay-Z is not innocent, and he has been more careful than Diddy about keeping his actions under wraps. Lose another one. Mm. They're terrified. They got good reason to be. You want to know what makes Diddy being publicly shamed like this so, so left? Who's that? Sean Carter is worse. Uh oh. Oh, man. He's smarter. He's patient. He's not sloppy. This he been lining up people he calls friends and stepping to the side while they get hit by the guillotine for 30 years. He's 
even worse. The focus was then shifted to Beyonce, with her former bodyguard claiming that Jay-Z had allegedly been drugging her. Destroy anyone who speaks out against you. Okay, I get the threats. But you have to remember one thing. I know your deepest secrets. I know so much about you and what you've done. I know so much on how you got what you are. How you step on the many people. Probably nobody knows. But I'll say, man, yeah, Beyonce's on drugs. She's been on them for a long time. And you keep her that way. Y'all worship what you worship to stay on top. But there's one thing about me, bro. I can't be bought. Diddy may have been helping Jay-Z drug Beyonce, which wouldn't be surprising at all. These accusations hit hard, and the internet went wild with reactions. Some were shook, while others pointed out that Cat Williams had been calling out Hollywood for ages, often brushed off as crazy. Comments poured in, labeling Diddy a menace to society and calling for change before he does some serious damage. One said, Diddy needs to be locked up ASAP already. And, I'm scared for Cat for real. Wouldn't be surprised if he had a medical emergency that they try to play as a drug overdose, trying to make him look crazy crazy or on a drug-fueled rant. We need to protect this man. Do you think Cat Williams should fear for his life? After all, people who go against these powerful people almost never get to see a happy ending. Unless people are finally starting to see Diddy for who he really is and he's gonna get blacklisted for good. In the age of cancel culture, it's a wild ride watching this online battle play out. Will Diddy get through this or will Cat Williams emerge victorious?